Hi, and welcome to Drill Boys. I'm Drill. Sam Bailey. How you doing? I'm welcome. How's it going, Sam? All, right. All good. I'm nice to be glad outside in this studio. <coughs> glad that it makes it look a bit like authentic. It's almost like we're actually outside in a car park. Yeah, so I like it. Yeah, green screen everywhere. Fantastic. <laughs> um, we've been up to? Not a lot. Um, training, injuring myself, playing a lot of football. Uh, the occasional wrestling in St. Helens. Good job. Plug for uh, just do wrestling. Yeah. But um, yeah, otherwise living life, getting married soon, real life taking over. You no, know? I mean you know about real life and babies and stuff. So thug life. Thug, thug, well, thug life. Pug life or thug life. Both. Yeah, fair enough. Depends what day it is. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you feeling? Because you just told me you went on your um, stand yesterday. Did I'm uh, sensitive? Surprisingly not. I thought I'd be a lot worse. Um, there are a lot of worse bodies that have returned that are uh, going to struggle today. But uh, I was, uh, you know, every time you go on a night out, you have that point where you, you get you get a bit giddy, you have a few too many drinks. But I always smooth myself out, have a nice glass of water in between, have some food, focus, take five minutes in the toilet to get rid of everything that's gone, <laughs> and then you can carry on with the rest start of the night. Again. Yeah, start again. So, <laughs> and that just the worst of all, though. Yeah, not really, because you still you still got the buzz without having like the like. The full stomach, because once you've got that like watered down stomach, yeah. you feel a bit bloated, you feel a bit slow. That disappears, even if you go to the toilet, that would be one. Dear Manis, the green screen's just going to show yeah, up. Yeah, green screen. Green screen. He's back again. Look at that. <laughs> you, can't, you, can't, you can't pay for professionalism like this. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it's fine, but it's one of the things you keep the buzz and you can keep going. And also, we went to the casino, made loads of money, it's all good. It's just every, people everywhere, oh. non, non stop. It's fantastic. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it was good fun. Uh, it wasn't a waste of money. It was my style and everything. Awesome. awesome. Great time. Awesome. Back again. Look at this I'm wrong. I'm you can't go. Take two. It's only Spalker. <laughs> left. <laughs> your, no, your left. Not where. <laughs> We're in. We're in. All right. Come on. That's what happens on drill bits. <laughs> it, it seems to always yeah. happen. Anyway. anyway, so when you get married? Uh, Five weeks today, which is obviously not when it's been coming out. So uh, September the 10th, awesome. nice day. Yeah, the day before my sister's birthday and some other event awesome. that we don't talk about in September. Got it? No. Oh, yeah. There he is. He's got <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> still uh, early. It's still <laughs> early. <laughs> but yeah, September the 10th, so like five weeks from this. And it's, uh, I'm excited. It's one of the things I'm not nervous. I'm not doing that cold feet. I'm not worried. Not yet. I'm genuinely the happiest person I could ever be with. So. Awesome. Dead romantic, me. Awesome. Hey right. Dean! He's not, he's not, he's hey, green, green screen, he's not even really there. He's it's genius. Office. Unbelievable. I had it in in post. Yeah. Alright All right, then. So when did it all start, Sam Bale? What was your first memory of wrestling? Um, I was happily watching uh, The Simpsons at home. Um, just there with my sister, babysitting. You know, knock on the door. That's a knock. That's what they are. Um, my friend uh, Jamal turned up. Um, Went, oh, but I'm just starting to come to this wrestling school. He instantly turned on the wrestling channel. I was like, what's this? Wrestling channel showing like all the Ring of Honor stuff, lots yeah. of like FBA at the time. So I was training school in Manchester, trying to come down. I was like, yeah, why not? I'm not doing anything else on Saturday. Turned up to this little grungy gym, Salah's gym. You may have heard. Yeah. Yeah, you've been there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Good gym, that. Yeah. Three, three flights of stairs. Like, yeah. where are we going? Actually, warm up there. Yeah. <laughs> Giant 20 by 20 ring sat there. <coughs> Bunch of people doing martial arts in the corner, and then uh, this big gang, uh, Declan O'Connor, going, All right, mate, way, way. Oh, he wasn't from London, I just like put him in that accent. <laughs> uh, yeah. He's like, Hey, you are. And I was like, oh, I'm Sam, nice to meet you. He's like, oh, Brilliant, we're well, all gonna do some wrestling, some rolls and stuff. And again, I wasn't this confident being you see before, I was quite a shy kid. But, like I was learning to be a little bit more, but I was really introvert. Didn't know anyone, so I didn't really know how to talk. Did the first bumps and rolls and stuff, and I bumped. Per bumps were apparently perfect. Like perfect bumps, front bumps, flip bumps. Got it all straight away. Silence. Couldn't have no action. Like there was no sound. I was like it was like a mouse hitting the mat. The mat apparently. It was like every, the only action. Was right. <laughs> it's nothing. Absolutely no sound. And so like you're really good, but you're really quiet. You need to get like a, a job that's gonna like throw you in the deep end. Yeah. So strangely, I got like a busing job at like, a, a, a restaurant. I busted tables, had to talk to customers, had to talk to people strangers all the time. All of a sudden, I was like, went back to training, started bumping, like, bang, ah, like everything, enthusiasm, right. like, because I was just like, well, fuck it, like, the only way I'm going to get on a show is if I'm going to be, like, a bit more enthusiastic. A year of training solid like that, uh, training with, like, uh, lots of the old Future Shock Illuminati, that's where I was with. Alex Shane also came around, uh, giving everyone choke bombs, whatever he was doing. Awesome. A lot of drugs. Um, 
no, no, not really. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just generally like having a lot of fun, finally getting like my motion, finally getting some kind of characters to do, and then uh, fast forward like a year, where I did my first show in Earlham. It was myself and my tag partner at the time called Shane Tyler with the SAS, Sam and Shane, yeah. clever, yeah. against uh, the Declan O'Connor and Joey Hayes, known as the Manchester Massive yeah. at the time. Uh, and yeah, it was, that was my first show in Earlham in front of a packed 54 people in the audience. Great time, although I thought it was massive at the time. I was just like, oh, we're in a working men's club because there must be loads of people here. Yeah. There's a bar, there must be loads of people. No, they were all in the other room at the pub. But that was my first wrestling memory, like building to a show. And it was loads of fun. I mean, I've got the bug ever since. And that was 13 years ago now, I think. 11, 12, 13, yeah, 13 years. So how old was you when you started training? Started 17. 17. 28 now. No, so not 11 years. 11 years. I'm also can keep count. But yeah, 17 I started training. Yeah, you can you can guess my age now, but yeah. You just told I know. I didn't say my actual age. How did you do it? I said 7, 11 years. You said I'm 27. I'm 28, so yeah. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> you told him that, aren't you? <laughs> good guess, good guess. There we go. But yeah. So, um, alright then, so. So you started out at GPW? Future Shock. Future Shock. Future Shock at the time. We, oh, were, was that? we were originally there at SLRs and then we left ah, GPW right, okay. went there. So you're a future kid. Future I'm, Shock I'm kid. I'm a future Shock kid. Future kid. <laughs> future kid of Shock. So, obviously I've seen you, uh, I'm a GPW guy obviously. I've oh, trained there. Yeah. And I've seen you train there a few times. So I've asked a few of the other guys this question. Well, what do you see the difference between the two schools? If you Ooh. can remember. Ooh, the Future Shock GPW. Um, Positive and negative. Positive and negative. Okay, positive thing. I'll go with GPW first. Like GPW is very much like it is a training school. You are not there to dick about as much. It's very much like the drills in there. Depending on who's there at that day, like you're there to learn something. You're there to like perfect what you're doing. Whereas Future Shock is very much like you have a little bit more freedom and choice. Like you can kind of you can come up with the idea yourself and what you want to try. And Future Shock's very clear. Go okay, we'll try that. And then if you fuck it up, they're like, right, this is what you need to do differently, or go, maybe that doesn't suit you. Like, I think uh, Alex Sinai is my first, perfect example. Turn up a future shot. All he wanted to do is Rey Mysterio moves. <coughs> Alex Sinai, 300 pound guy. Just wanted to be Rey Mysterio. That was his favorite wrestler, so he wanted to do flips, he wanted to, do, he wanted to do those things. And we were like, you know what? Let's do it. And now look at Sinai, he can do a moonsault from the top rope. So again, it was one of those things of being like, don't do it, don't do all the Rey Mysterio yeah. moves, but yeah, yeah, maybe we can, maybe yeah. we can cre create something, and then, yeah. Whereas GBW is like, okay, you're a big guy, you're going to do big guy moves, you're smaller, you're going to do smaller moves. It's very like, we know your style before you kind of put you in a basket. Yeah. Which you kind of, again, is sort of works in a negative because you then only know how to work a style mm. and you can't kind of branch out, which again, sort of limits sometimes characters, sort of limits people's kind of abilities. Sort of limits working with other people. Suddenly, if you're a big guy and all you do is like pick him up and throw him around and do power bombs and you've got to wrestle another big guy, suddenly you can't work that <laughs> picking up throwing around yeah, the yeah. power and sort of thing and like with feature Shack you kind of look like the girls wrestle the guys and like a lot of like the Blossom Twins were one of our like our trainees for a little while a few other people have come up and again they'll learn wrestling with the guys as well as wrestling with the girls so they'll know okay I can get thrown around by this guy but actually I need to wrestle the girl and I can't just be thrown around and do all the cool stuff we'll actually learn how to do a different match so that's kind of the two contrasting styles it's very I feel you're a little bit there's a little bit more rigorous training in GPW, which is a good thing, but at the same time, you're a little bit limited to how much you can do. Yeah. Whereas Future Shock, again, it's that kind of strange family where we're like, okay, well, you're the creepy kid, but we're going to teach you how to be a big guy as well as being a small guy, as well as being a flippy guy, as well as being a, just a character sort of thing. So it's kind of nice for us. And that's such a diplomatic answer of not being negative <laughs> about anything at the same time as that's being fine. positive. It's all right. Not shitting on anyone. That's my you? coaching thing. I have to be yeah. like, all my negative has to be wrapped in a ball of positivity. Gonna give you a bit of negative, but I'm gonna give you positive yeah. as well. You gotta give him a shit sandwich. This was shit, but this was good. <laughs> yeah. Improve on this. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, so when you had your first match, yes, how was it? Awful. It was against it was definitely kind of and Joey Hayes. That was my first. That's my first match was in early. Actually, you say I say awful. Uh, I'll give credit to Joseph, Joey Hayes, Joseph Hayes, or depending on, or Hayes, simply Hayes, Hayes. Or, um, for crediting because essentially, like myself and Shane, it was our first ever match. Yeah. Declan essentially was my trainer at the time, and yeah, Joey was the guy who was like, right, what we're we gonna do? <laughs> and we were like, oh yeah, we'll give you this, 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 and Joey went, how about we don't do all of that? We have a match that makes sense. So again, being a trainee, being like 17, we're like, yeah, I want to do every move under the sun. How oh, about well, we don't do that? And essentially that was Joey. My first match was like, Joey, we're just like, we'll calm it down, we'll do, slow it down, we'll actually tell a story. And Joey was like, perfect to do that. And that was him, like, again, 
11 years ago, Joey Hayes was like the smartest guy I knew in the wrestling ring. And now fast forward like this, and he's still yeah. one of the smartest people I know in the wrestling ring. Um, yeah, it was loads of fun. Like, again, it was one of the things where it was a learning curve for me to actually be in front of an audience, to realize that you actually could stop during a match and actually get the crowd to breathe and actually get a crowd to get behind you rather than like do all this cool stuff where a crowd goes, do more, do more, do more. Because it's not a Ring of Honor crowd. It's not been fast forwarded. So yeah, they can look like they're really crazy. <laughs> if you watch early Ring of Honor DVDs, snap it for drill bits. If they used to fast forward the action a little bit. Did that? Uh, the only way you could see this is if you look at the crowd, occasionally the crowd would just go, like they're not even like it's just they're not even, they're not even reacting in time. And that was my favorite part of watching. And again, I just, that's what I thought crowds did. I thought every crowd was a ring of one yeah. so they're smart to the business, but they love it if you look. so I think got taught to slow it down and yeah. Yeah. Credit to Joe Hayes. Um, so you've been wrestling for a while, like you said. When did all the components finally fit together and you got it or are you still learning to get it? Um, I mean you can never stop learning. It's the first like first thing you learn, it's like you you are an open book. You need yeah. to even if even if the guys in wrestling like a year comes up to you and goes, oh, it would have been really cool if you'd done this. It's one of the things where you go, actually, you've got newer eyes to this, so that might be something I'll take in. Um, but as opposed to me as a wrestler, like the mechanics, of mechanics the match. of things, um, I still, I still think like only like four or five years ago, maybe I got it. Yeah. Like to the point where I was like, I can control it because again, it was that point of I was going down to Hull wrestling at GW, and again, they were putting on like main event matches and things, and their guys, all their guys were quite young and hungry for it. And suddenly they were looking at me like, how are we going to do this? And I was like, I don't know, like, just, just hit it against the wall and see what lands like sort of thing. And it was that kind of, I took a bit of a break from wrestling a few times. I injured my shoulder, had many injuries over the years and stuff. But um, I took a break and while, while I was taking a break from wrestling, I was watching loads of British wrestling and also of American wrestling. And I was watching the stuff of like, I was watching the differences. So I was watching how WWE gets it across. And again, they've got camera angles, they've got commentators, they've got like every part of it. So they've got a whole backstory, you've got a video package, you've got this, this. you go to like American Indies and they've got they've got one match to tell a story and again that's when you see the fast forward and they do loads of moves because they've got no time to tell a story. And then yeah. you watch British Wrestling, <clears throat> which again was on a DVD and uh, I think it was, I was watching a Future Shock DVD and we didn't have commentary at the time. I was like, it's missing something because this story is brilliant, like they were telling like, sort of like it was Cyber Lovers, Jack, uh, Jack Domino, they've been hating each other on every show for ages. But there was no way, there was no voice to tell you what had happened unless you'd been to every show, you didn't know this backstory. I think I came to a future show, it was like my first show back for a little while, and I went, I've just bought a dictaphone, I've got two headsets, who wants to do commentary? And then it was like G-Man and, uh, G-Man and, did it, might have been, might have been just G-Man on his own the first time, or G-Man and Greg Lambert did it for a little while, and then it was uh, G-Man and Magic Mark, and then it became like G-Man and Matt, and it's sort of like evolved into it, but that's where Future Shock got commentary from, because it wasn't just a case of DVDs missed something. And I was like, that was where I started to sort of see that, okay, less is more. If you, if you can get a camera angle here at a certain time, then it'll see my reaction to, and it's just that, now you can, all these puzzle, all these puzzle bits sort of start to fit. And that's sort of like, a few years ago, I just started getting that kind of, you learn more in a road trip about someone else rather than being in a match with them. Like I think uh, me and you went down to BWP, like we talked, we talked bollocks for large parts. We, <laughs> we came up with the idea. I was like, oh, the fun spot with like get a basketball. We use the basketball spot. Yeah. And again, it was one of those things. Where, like it was a daft idea in a car. We did it, and it got a massive reaction. It was one of those like it was just one of those things. Where we were like, okay, now I can see how this guy's work, brain works. I see how this guy. Okay, this guy finds this stuff funny as well, so we can work together to do that. And yeah, it's just find something that fits for everyone. You should never be a selfish wrestler. Because no. if you're a selfish wrestler, then all you're gonna be is that person. That everyone goes, I don't want to wrestle him. He's just gonna do all this stuff, and I'm just gonna take loads of things. Whereas you go, I want to make you look good, because if I make you look good, you're going to remember that I made you look good, and then you're going to tell someone else that, oh yeah, that guy made me look good. And then by networking, even if fans go, no, he's not the best, wrestlers will start to like you. Yeah. And then if wrestlers start to like you, promotions will start to like you. And therefore you get used more. And even if fans are going, this guy gets used around a lot, but he keeps getting beaten by everyone. It's like, oh, it's starting to click. That's why he keeps getting yeah, beaten a yeah. lot, because people start liking to wrestle. So yeah. that, like a few years ago, I started to get in that head. People started telling me like, oh, I, was really, I love working with you because you're really unselfish and stuff. And it's like, at first it was because I didn't have any moves. I was like, I just, <laughs> just ran out of stuff to do. And then I started realizing actually, it's because I can tell a story without necessarily having to do 3,000 moves to get myself yeah, cool. And that was it. And also, yeah, my like, arm side hurt a lot more. I started doing less, less moves was meant that I had to do less work. So it was great for me. But uh, that, yeah, three or four years ago was my like, I've got it. I know what I've got to do now. I don't know how to work a crowd. That was it. Cool.
So, um, how has the Sam Bailey? Is it a gimmick? No. No. So, how has the Sam Bailey character then evolved in wrestling? Because um, you, you had an afro. I had an afro. I mean, that's not a gimmick. That's, that's real. With some black sleeve or something. <laughs> and then you shaved your head, became mean, and then become this character, and become this character. Now you're doing something with Pokemon. Yes. Um, everything I've kind of done has been either. The Pokemon stuff's a little bit more like. I, I tapped into what was coming up. Yeah. Neither was Pokemon Go coming out. It's one of the things that everyone as like a 90s kid or even like a late 80s kid would have like watched or collected the cards. Or so it's something for everyone. Sort of thing. It's that like okay, it's my childhood as well. But now it's a bunch of kid, new kids' childhoods. It's like okay, I'm going to be a Pokemon guy today. And they, everyone was like, Are you sure? And I was like, You watch. <laughs> and all of a sudden the music hit, and all of a sudden Pokemon Go exploded, and everyone's like, What a genius! Like po I was like, Everyone's doing it. Like the WWE had our truth walking on Raw. Disrupting a match, playing yeah. Pokemon Go. Yeah. I was like, if the biggest company in the world acknowledged that this exists, me down here doing this, definitely still working. But everything's kind of been me, like the baby face, the big afro, the dancing. There was just the happy me, the happy like clappy. Hey, I'm the guy who's gonna say hi to everyone, clap everyone's hands, make sure everyone's having a good time, sort of thing. The villainous me, which was the half shaved chest hair, <laughs> the straight hair, or like the hair shaved off, was essentially just the bitterness side of me. So it's like. Everyone has this point in wrestling when they get miserable about it. Yeah. Like it's, it's not it's not a long thing, but it's that point where you're miserable about it. You're bitter. You really just you start to dislike people. You start to dislike watching people wrestle. You start to dislike your own wrestling because you're picking apart everything you've done. And that was just me. Just that was my character. There was just like the bitterness I've ever felt in wrestling was how I'm going to act as a character. Instead of being inward about it, I'm going to be very open about it and to an audience and blame them for me feeling really bitter about wrestling because it's their fault because. If you were cheering me, I'd like myself. But because you're now boot, like it was that kind of easy way of just being like, oh, just to be myself and be a bit of like. I sometimes I get to be a like a dickhead backstage. Yeah. And it's fun. Hello. Just doing interviews, green screen. That's just yeah, green screen. It's just, yeah. We're in the drill yeah. studio, apparently. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> um, they're, they're all coming out to watch this it's again. It's again. I'm just such a high it's quality world, world star. Yeah. God, you're so black. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, um, to every character I do, there is a little bit of realness in there. So like, if I get to be an arrogant back, dickhead backstage, that is me just practicing being a heel yeah. in real life. Um, sort of thing of now, now the industry I work in, um, as well as being a soccer coach, so you work with kids, you are completely PG. Everything's fun, silly, you be a little bit cheeky, but you've got to be that kind of, you are the ultimate clean cut baby face. Yeah. But I also work now in a bar slash restaurant. It's like it's a bar, so it's cocktails and things, and you get to be cheeky. You get to be an asshole to people <laughs> to that point where you, you get again. You have to be quite polite and stuff about it, but you can generally be like someone like, "Oh, can I get a cocktail?" Like, no, <laughs> no. I mean, like you can be that little bit cheeky yeah. and that little bit. More, and it's so it's worked so well to me be being a villain because I'll happily go up to someone and now I have the confidence to just stare at someone for just too long and just not blink, and just kind of look at them in the eyes, just to make them feel a little bit uncomfortable about the fact that either am I looking at them because I want them or because I want to kill them. Mm. And they'll never quite know, and we still do. We're doing this right now. I mean, you're not you're, I'm not intimidated. you're not intimidated because you know it's me being yeah. being a dick. But at that point, if you didn't <laughs> know me, and, if, and suddenly I was taller, and suddenly you were sat down, and I'm suddenly staring at you to that point where I'm getting uncomfortably close while I'm talking to you. That just it's just one of those like, do I hit him? Do I <laughs> stay sat down? I'm like, that's the kind of should I say something? Yeah. <laughs> So usually, go. usually when it's an eight-year-old kid who's just bought, he's like, he's got his, he's like big, big thumb, foam finger. He just wants to say anything. He just wants to cower and find his parents. Um, awesome. But yeah, wrestling, my wrestling style is me. But it, obviously, the volume turned up all that colour. So. Cool. All right then, let's go away from wrestling for a bit. Okay. Let's talk about you. Let's talk about your personal life. Oh. Not too in depth. Okay. Not too personal. Too real. That's it. That's it. Um, so, what do you actually do outside of wrestling? Uh, I have two jobs outside of wrestling. I am a professional football coach, yeah. uh, teaching an under eight football team at the moment, and I am also, obviously, I said, a bartender slash waiter at a uh, restaurant slash bar. Yeah. How do you find coaching? Coaching is the most fun I've ever had. Um, I went, I got, I was lucky enough to go to America last year. I uh, did three months over there, where I was literally teaching soccer. 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 And make sure everyone had their pennies <laughs> instead of bibs. It was, it was an interesting moment. I did three months in the West Coast. Uh, teaching football over there, so that was like such a humbling experience because again, it was you have a British accent, like not an English accent, not a Manchester accent, not a, you have a British, British accent, and because you're British, you obviously know everything there is to know about football. Yeah. You obviously are best friends with David Beckham. You've obviously met the Queen. Yeah. You are obviously uh, BFS with James Bond. You've, well, James Bond is oh, yeah, right. but James Bond's on your speed dial. 
Um, and obviously, um, you've played professional football for your whole life, apart from these three months where I've gone coaching. I was like, yeah, that's, that's totally all true. I played for Plymouth. Like, that's, <laughs> yeah, whatever you want to hear. A Plymouth? Are they like in the Premier League? Like, yeah, 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 for years. <laughs> and I just did my knee in, unfortunately. That was. <laughs> so I'm lying to small children in America, which is which which finally was actively encouraged by my job. They were like, if they ask you the question on that, just like, just say yes. Just say yes. Yeah. Just say yes, because the parents will love it. They're not going to check you out. They're not fine. <laughs> just like, if, yeah, if they Google Tam Bailey, they get some chick from X Factor. So it's just like, yeah, I can say whatever I want, really. Yeah, yeah what X Factor? What are you talking about? <laughs> um, but that was fun. And again, it was that kind of experience of like, I got to travel America for three months and just like, teach little tricks and like have parents come up to me going like uh, giving me like uh, Starbucks vouchers or uh, Subway vouchers being like oh my god like the kids haven't stopped talking about you all week you've been amazing like getting letters and like thank you cards and things which is really just kind of like the weirdest like job in the world right? I'm being paid to teach these people but these people are actually learning so much that they're giving me other things and like uh, also the point we were like how we basically we got to be uh, the parents who are looking after us so we've been in other people's houses for the week so not only are we like, like guests in other people's houses they're like yeah, yeah, feel free to use like fridge is yours, anything you want. Oh, we're gonna go shopping, do you want anything? Like uh, anything you need for the whole week? Green screen technology, this. It's almost like a car is actually parking behind it. <laughs> um, just that, yeah, they look completely after us. And again, I like, came coming back over here and I've got a, a great team from like, where I am, from Manchester. And again, all the parents, they, uh, because they knew I was getting married, they like chipped in and bought a wedding present for us, like bought me some new bubble boots when I came back, I like, got a new shirt, but like. And they just look after me to the point where I'm like, I don't, I get, I do this voluntarily, but it's nice to get paid. Like, I kind of, you know, I'm kind of my elder. Slide. Big, big considerate. Big considerate. Oh, it's definitely on you. Yeah, definitely on you. I can't do this point, I don't know what this language is. It's actually been recorded. Yeah, it's live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Live on, yeah. on you porn. I do feel like that. Yeah, yeah. There goes his interview on drill. Yeah, that's it, he's not getting one, mate. You mean? Trying to hog all the flam there. <laughs> but um, yeah, I do that. Um, I said work on a bar, and again, it's that kind of thing. I guess to be a cheeky chappy. Cool. I guess to be a cheeky chappy, a little bit of a flirt, and you know, I mean, that's how I met my missus at the time. So it was quite nice to be like, the cheeky chappy's the one she like, fell in love with. Cool. It was quite nice. And then, obviously, I went home and became this in, like, in the very quiet person. <laughs> She's like, who's this not bad? Like, <laughs> like, oh, sorry. Awesome. So, um, what are you into? What are we asking here? <laughs> Can you reveal what you want? Um, I'm massively into sports, so I watch a lot of football. Uh, I used to play squash, which is a weird yeah. fact. Like I, I played squash. I used to play squash. Played squash. Played squash. Uh, I played for Manchester up until the age of under 16. So really? Then, yeah. Posh kid when you're too, too... You're not posh enough to play squash, and I cried. That's a true story. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, right, I've never played squash again. Apparently it's a posh boy sport. Um, play a lot of sport, yeah, a lot of video games. Uh, we've talked about video games loads of times. Yeah. Like, uh, again, sports games like FIFA, but like uh, Rocket League, a lot of like, uh, we play in Fallout. Um, and yeah, at the moment, because planning wedding is all I'm doing, I don't really have any like time apart from that. Like, yeah. I don't really have that lad culture, I don't go out drinking too much. Like, um, although I've had a stag and I'm recovering from that, like, I very rarely go out and do that. I'll uh, spend a lot of time editing and designing. Um, that's just kind of our hobby and stuff. So any like pictures you ever see or any kind of like graphics to you of me, <coughs> generally I've done them. I've never said like, or, or I've asked a graphics designer, go, is this all right? And they've gone, yeah, you need to do this. And I've gone, oh, I don't know how to do that on Photoshop. So, but like anything like that, that's kind of just a little thing. I'm now I've realized there's a camera, I forget every so often. I mean, if you're talking to you, but there's an audience. Um, but yeah, like a little bit, I like just dabbling about, I like a lot of music and stuff, but uh, yeah, it's all about it's all about wrestling at the moment. Yeah, it is. Wrestling and learning football techniques, being the next uh, Jose. You're Man United fan, aren't you? I am. I'm a partial. Partial to Man United, but also like I've got some loyalties to City. I've got some loyalties. I know. How could you do that? My dad's a long lifelong blue. <coughs> it's hard. Blue. It's hard to. Uh, it's hard to fight your dad about football. Yeah. But I'm, like, I'm a Barca boy through and through. That's my team. That's why my team's since '93. <laughs> so, so, uh, yeah. What do you think? What do you think in the the Manchester clubs will finish? Um, I see. If United don't win the league, they're gonna struggle. I feel like it's this season, it's this season or not. Yeah. I think with everything they've bought and if Pogba comes through, like it has to happen now. Like this is United season. If United somehow follow or Zlatan just becomes a bit of a failure, then I can see them hitting like fourth bit. <laughs> Middle of a Liverpool. Uh, they'll finish above Liverpool. Liverpool are gonna have that early start where they'll play really well at the start of the season and do what they do at like every season and fall off. Same thing with Arsenal till Christmas and till can't play. No. Um, can't play for three months. No, I think it's City's City season if, if United don't win it. Yeah. It'll be City's. Yeah. But, um, 
Leicester will finish mid-table, but they'll still, have, they'll, still have a, they'll still hit a happy run and they'll be happy with their performance. I mean, like Leicester was the success story last season, yeah. but I think them playing Championship League, Champions League football this season, as well as Premiership, they're going to struggle. They haven't bought anyone really for the size. No, they haven't. Um, what are you watching at the moment? Um, I've missed the robot, which is on... I've seen that, yeah. Start watching that. And get, and get around to it. It's fucking amazing. Um, Mr. Robot, I've watched, I watched Preacher. Yeah. That's another one that's seen all of So good. The last episode Brilliant. was fantastic as well. Um, so I was watching, uh, I watched Gotham until recently, because obviously that's finished. And um, what's I've been watching? Uh, Narcos, Daredevil. Starts again soon. Yeah. 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 Watching all my, basically all my Marvel stuff, yeah. anything on Netflix. That's like, um, Have you seen Jessica Jones yet? Love Jessica Jones. They're doing a one off of the, the big black dude, didn't they? Are they? Yeah. I know he's got, he's got a series coming out. Yeah. That um, starts in August, and then they've got in September. Yeah, and then they've got Defenders, which is yeah, Defenders. They showed a trailer, but it's uh, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, him. Oh, and, really? Yeah, and they're Flash. all like. I don't think it's Flash. Flash is a different universe. What is it? Flash is DC. I oh, know it's all the same. Come on, it's all the same to me. Come on. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I get to. What I'm watching. I've saved myself from Suicide Squad. I'm not watching it until next week. I watched that yesterday. Did you watch it yesterday? Yeah. Good. Bad. Honestly, Nick. I want to see what the people's problem is. It's called Suicide Squad, not. Joker with the Suicide Squad because okay. everyone, everyone's complaining because Joker's not in it a lot. But to me, it's about the Suicide Squad. Oh, yeah. So I don't know how people complain going, oh, Jared Leto's not in it a lot. Ugh. Well, it's not about Jared Leto, it's not about the Joker. That's why they were bringing, that was just to introduce Batman's in it for a few scenes, only for like 20 seconds. But it's not about Batman, is it? You have to bring the you have to put spoilers on before oh, you say, Stop people. people feel I'm good. not really revealing anything. But from what. Just tell them Batman's in it. Yeah, yeah, everyone knows Batman. Do they know? He's only in for 20 seconds. Well, now you've ruined how long he's in for, you know. <laughs> but um, they're doing. Um, but to me, I thought it was fab for what it was. It, as a standalone film, not comparing it to Batman vs Superman, not comparing yeah, it yeah, to yeah, yeah. Avengers. Not Wanting Joker in this album. Yeah. But then again, like Joker will probably be in the next Batman film. Well, I I read that the commissioned Harlequin. Oh yeah, as a Batman. film. So yeah. obviously, third you'll have your Joker. There you go. And they're making another Suicide Squad. Of course they are, it's so, going to make a gajillion dollars. Joker will probably not be in that one. No, <laughs> he'll probably be in the Suicide Squad, they'll, they'll just like, oh, oh and J Jared Leto is the uh, Joker. Something like that, but yeah. Just him, but loads of comic book hate. And then, and then I've seen um, Advertise, a new TV series on Atlanta called, was it Woodcock or something like that? Well, Warwick? Well, some, I don't know, I've seen it, it looked futuristic. Well, like, these people in like this alternative world. But they're like zombies in real life, and um, Anthony Hopkins is in it. Okay. Have you seen I'm it? I have not seen it. It looks amazing. My girlfriend saved it on the phone. If you want to, I'll send it to you. It's out in August. Okay. The end of August. It looks awesome. It's something you might be interested I know, in. It's, I don't know. it's one of those. Yeah. It looks good, and I'll send you it. Yeah, yeah, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm joined. Um, anyway, it's not about me. I know. It's, it's, it's called drill bits, yeah. Um, <laughs> nah, let's, let's start wrapping this up then. We've waffled on too long. Classic. Classic drill and Bailey here. Out, out it goes. Waffle. Just talk about nothing. He's tried to get me on the show for ages. I, I have. Just, I just keep telling him no. It was it was rough last time. <laughs> but, you know. I, yeah, I'm much nicer today. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, last few questions. Are you okay. ready for this? Are we quick firing or are we, are we just. It's up to you, like I said. As long this as is you, your show. It's as quick don't as you want to answer. Like, do a quick fire. <laughs> you answer them quick. All right, boom, I'll give you one. You ready? I'm in the zone. Ready? Zone. Very much of a scene. It was Sami Zayn versus. Uh, Shinji Nakamura, or I'm gonna go. This is this is just for nostalgia pop. Rock vs Hogan WrestleMania. Awesome. Or Rock vs Austin at WrestleMania 18. Actually, that one been that one because that was the first like Mania I watched. I've got three. Stuff is I'm just picking many. It's fine. It's fine. Hello. Um, where can we park to come here? Uh, I think there's parking on the other side. Oh, is there? Um, or if there is any space here, it's just, no, it's just not good. really. The cars there, but I don't think people are able to get out. Uh, yeah, there might be some space on the other side. I'm probably guessing. Or is that car staying here? I have no idea. It's not ours, unfortunately. Are you restless? Yeah, we're also recording just an interview at the moment. Doing interviews? Oh, <laughs> That's alright. Again, okay, thank part you. Part of real life. This green screen, Jimmy, is it's amazing. <laughs> um, but where can you park? I don't know. Favourite match I've ever been in? Favourite match I've ever been in it was myself, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Zach Gibson, Street Fight, Infinite Promotions. Um, to the point where we actually. I, he had to go to the hospital to get his ear drained. I had bits of table coming out of my back. I don't know what we got. One minute. One minute, one minute. Boom. Alright, okay, we'll have a flashback. Uh, me and Zach Gibson, Street Fight, loads of fun. 
killed each other. By each other, he had to get his air drained. I had to get bits of table pulled out my back. Oh, but it was one of those things where the crowd loved it. We had so much fun. And uh, at the time, Prince Nevitt was at the show. And now Fergal. Um, oh yeah, Finn, Finn Balo, as he's now known. And we came up with the idea where we're going to do this big elbow drop through the stage, uh, through the uh, announce desk. And uh, Derek comes and went, "So you're going to be lying there, and he's going to be coming off there." That was like a great idea. Just walked off and left us, and we're like, "What do you, what do you mean?" That's was like, uh, uh, yeah. but yeah, that was that was one of my favorite matches I've been in. Cool. What's your dream match? Uh, dream match. Dead or alive. Uh, I'd love to wrestle Sting. It's yeah. obviously not going to happen anytime soon. Um, Sting would be my dream match. If not Sting, I mean, you can't say that. You can't not say The Rock, really. Yeah. Like, if you could wrestle The Rock, just just even if it was one of those, he's going to beat you up in ten seconds. Oh, I'm there. <laughs> All day. All Stuff day. For, yeah. <laughs> Give me a rock bottom. People's elbow. Happy day. Yeah, yeah they're my awesome. two. Who would be your dream partner or manager? Um, I would. I'd love Mr. Fuji. I'd love to just completely go out there and have like the man who, who managed Yokozuna coming to me the ring side by me, just be like, we're ethnics. Yeah. 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 Boo us. <laughs> Boo. Classic. <laughs> Classic American crowds, um, or having a tag partner. I mean, like Sami Zayn. It's one of those people who's just like so energetic and popular that I bounce off him all day. Awesome. I know. I mean, like I got to tag with Bubblegum. I usually say Bubblegum, but I've tagged with him. And yeah. He was much bouncier than me. So fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> um, last two questions. You get to ask me one question. Okay. I mean, you didn't tell me this beforehand, so it's like you like, right. there's no preparation for this. Right. Okay. If it's gonna be generic. If you could swap bodies with any professional wrestler, dead or alive, who would you swap with and why? Oh, it's a two-part. Right. Oh, that's yeah. a good question. Yeah. No one's ever asked me that. I would love to swap bodies with The Rock. And why? Because he's a good-looking man. <laughs> yeah. His body's to die for and his laugh just looks amazing. Yeah. I'd just love to live his laugh for one day. He is, he is just the jacks to the nines as well. Ah, that or Tom Hardy. There's my man crush. Man crush, man crush Monday. Yeah. Tom Hardy. Oh, yeah. Tom Hardy with tattoos or without tattoos? Doesn't matter. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> Anything Tom Anything. Hardy. Fair enough. Awesome. Like yeah. It. Yeah. yeah, that's a perfectly good answer. I like it. Last question. What advice would you give to anyone who usually can start training or has just started wrestling? Uh, the same advice that was given to me when I started training is uh, keep your ears open and your mouth shut for the first year. Um, you will hear lots of advice and lots of things will get thrown at you. Take it all in. It's one of those things. It's up to you whether you do something with it. Because you can, you'll get. Everyone will tell you different things. There is no right or wrong way to do professional wrestling. I mean, don't land on your head. Don't break your neck. I mean, they're pretty standard ones. But I mean, like, just listen, and you'll get feedback from everyone. And there'll be some people you really don't want to hear the feedback on, but they're giving you the best advice you've ever heard. That's just yeah. Keep your mouth shut. Listen to as many people as you can, and just get feedback from everyone. Even if it's people who are on the show with you, referees. Um, announcers, people who've wrestled, cameramen, because they see everything. And then you've got the footage, you can send it back to you and be like, this is what you did right, this is what you did wrong. But awesome. yeah, listen to feedback, it's the best shout. You'll have a happier career, I'm sure. Is that it? That is, that's all I've got for you. <coughs> Anything you want to plug? Uh, I'm on social media, also Sam Bailey <coughs> on everything. Or uh, find me on Facebook, you probably won't, you'll probably find her from X Factor. Okay. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm <coughs> Bailey on Facebook as an entertainer, because that's what I am. But also Sam Bailey on Twitter, also Sam Bailey on Instagram. I mean, don't find me on Snapchat, because I don't use it. And this is Ashton Smith. Yeah, my yeah, life partner. Coming He's coming down. There he is. Just there, just recording. Just recording. recording. Like the fifth one today. He's yeah, awesome. Cool. He's like, he got engaged as well yesterday. That's what I was doing this anyway. Hey, jump on here. Yeah. Well, yeah. Who's got that? I don't know. Is, care. It, is it mine? Do I care? Um, yeah, that's it. Another green <laughs> yeah. screen. Good speed. It's good. The life, life. This is my real life partner. It's <laughs> so, about marrying in five weeks. Yeah. Anyway, is that it? That's everything. <laughs> right. Thanks for watching. I'm Drill. I'm also Sam Bailey. I'll catch you on the road. Peace.